Hello and welcome to the episode 6 recap of Gossip Girl. So this episode is the eve of Max's parents' file renewal and this is a good thing because I really enjoy them on screen. Graham and Jules are still hooking up and they're in their new little lust bubble. She wants to go public with the relationship. She's now been made the brand ambassador for Louis Vuitton and she wants to go to some party with him. He says that he wants to but he feels it's too soon. Jules and Monet are back together. Well the three friends Jules, Monet and Luna are back together. They honestly are better together even though I miss Monet being on her own in the spotlight. I do think that she does well on her own and so does Luna but Jules kind of flails a lot as a character when she's on her own so I do think that she needs the other two. Luna doesn't buy Graham's act for a second and she's like are you sure Graham has left his wife since that's the line that all married men tell their lovers and they never end up leaving their marriages. Julian rather trusts him though. Later Jules gets news that Louis Vuitton is cancelling her brand ambassadorship because they've found her to be in violation of the ethics of their brand. This is all happening too quickly again. The show is always giving me whiplash. I mean we're hardly halfway through the episode but okay. Anyway turns out as we might have guessed it's because of her relationship with Graham which has been leaked to Gossip Girl. Kate gets kidnapped off the street and I hope she isn't harmed but I do hope that they keep her for a couple of episodes so that we get a breather from her. Zoya is feeling a bit abandoned because nobody's home, her father's working late and she's dealing with her plan B thing. I don't think this needed to be a high school special because maybe Maybe most people who watch the show know how the morning after pill works but I think it would have been nicer to be with her a little bit more as she navigated this. I mean we see her coming out of Planned Parenthood with the box though so, so we know that she'll be fine. I don't know what I want from the show except for more and for things to move a little slower. I'm surprised that she isn't confiding in her chaotic friend but thank goodness we're spared Shan's presence this episode. Zoya is genuinely more likable even when she's fumbling about without her. Anyway Zoya goes to the bar to try and talk to Jules but Jules also has her own Thing going on so yeah that doesn't quite work out. Audrey and Max are in and out of scenes kind of stressing over planning Max's dad's file renewal. It's the typical we need a venue type of panic but they're a really likable pair so it's fine low stakes drama. They're both also looking very good this episode and I'm glad that the drama isn't their relationship for a change. Luna has decided to do some digging into possibly shady Graham. She thinks that he has some skeletons. Monet also accepts help from Zoya to try and find out who sent out part of a fake sex tape claiming that the person on the tape was Monet. Monet knows that it's not her though because the sex tape was with a man. Although she's not really bothered by the concept of sex tapes because she'd planned to release her own but on her own terms after graduation. Again I have to ask aren't any of these kids wanting to get into Ivy League universities? While social media clout is all very fun and does equal genuine success, I mean look at Emma Chamberlain as an example, I do miss the characters having real life stakes like universities or for Zoya wanting to get into elite writing programs. I loved the academic competitiveness of the old Gossip Girl and Dan was really believable as an avid reader and up and coming writer. They were fairly consistent with those kinds of storylines which I find I'm missing here. Like there's nothing really consistent about these characters. Obi has a storyline finally that does not involve a girl but it's about his family's shady business dealings. Nelly Yuki makes a comeback this episode and she's wanting to break the story about Obi's family. So the story is actually kind of juicy. Obi's family paid an engineer to say that the soil where they were going to be constructing a building was solid, but it wasn't actually. And then when the soil proved unsafe, Obi's parents paid that engineer again to say that he was acting alone. The engineer is now taking the fall, but Obi wants his family's shadiness exposed. Turns out Kate has been kidnapped by Georgina. Yes, she's back. Also about the sex tape, it was actually of Zoya and she posed as Monet, pretended to be Monet that night. The rave guy obviously made it without her consent and now she basically wants Monet Monet's help in destroying the tape. She doesn't come clean about this by the way. Monet is the one who figures this all out. Zoya seemed to be perfectly fine going on pretending that this person on the tape was Monet, which is kind of gross. But quite often it's the righteous ones who end up being the dodgiest. Anyway, Luna catches Shady Graham kissing his pregnant wife's belly. Men are disgusting liars. The sky is blue. News at 11. Georgina makes Kate run a few evil errands for her. So chaos in the Upper East Side. Everyone at this time is at the vile renewal ceremony in this episode. So this is where everything's going down. Jules invites Graham there with the intention of proving to Louis Vuitton that she doesn't date married men. I don't get the plan and then, and then Luna tries to convince her that they should stick to their plan of outing him to his pregnant wife. Oh okay so that's the plan. It's messy 
but I'll allow it. Turns out Georgina is out to ruin the vial renewal, so nothing really works out. The music goes wrong, Max's dad's gown goes missing, his hair is bad. Rave guy also ends up there and he tells Zoya that he made the video because he's not the most popular guy at school and so when he connected with Zoya and they had sex, he recorded it because he knew that the guys wouldn't believe him. Well, it's no wonder that he's so unpopular. What a loser who has technically maybe committed a crime as well, even though he says that he has since deleted the video. Jillian and Luna's plan falls flat as well because the pregnant lady turns out to be Graham's sister. Graham got with Jillian to hurt her because of what her dad did to his sister. Something about his sister's music career and how Jillian's dad destroyed her in court. She's stunning, by the way. Anyway, another loser. I don't even want to spend more time on his storyline anymore. But by the way, he's not even married. There is no wife. This was all pretend. Anyway, Obi's plan to out his parents' shadiness is also thwarted when they reach out to Aki's billionaire dad who pushes some propaganda in his media empire. And Obi gets a call from Nelly Yuki saying that he's been misinformed. There's no proof of his allegations. Eventually, one of Obi's parents' business partners also takes her own life in the middle of this investigation. Max's parents end up having their vial renewal in a smaller setting and it's actually really sweet. Jules goes over to Graham's house and says that despite everything she still likes him. They do say their goodbyes to one another but this is mostly because of Graham. Jules would have fallen straight back into his arms if he had had wanted that as well. Oh Jules get it together. We're halfway through the season with nothing to show for it character development wise. I mean this is very Serena Vanderwoodson who also just followed her feelings to troubled men and I like to watch a messy relationship but I like Jules's character a little bit too much for this terrible storyline. Monet pulls some strings to get rave guy expelled from school thank goodness. And we also get a sweet moment between the two sisters where they talk and Zoya gets to tell Julian about everything that happened at the rave and afterwards. I like that Jules has since calmed down on trying so hard to be best friends with Zoya and now they're just sisters who are there for each other. It just felt really genuine and natural. It was a sweet moment. Anyway, at the end of the episode, we find out that Georgina is basically trying to team up with Kate to get her to be a better agent of chaos. I think that bringing her back in this way was a mistake because I mean, isn't she a little old for the as in she's an adult who cares about these kids lives I loved seeing her again but she should have maybe come in with her own axe to grind with her old enemies but teaming up with Kate and this new gossip girl eh I don't really care for it but I will say that all in all this wasn't a terrible episode anyway that's it though if you have seen it feel free to share your thoughts and thank you for watching